This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. All right, been a little while. It's kind of bad when I look at the video I was supposed to make, kept putting it off, and then realized it was pretty much exactly a year ago that I attempted to make this. But here we are, finally had some free time, and let's jump into it. So what I have here is a few examples of the original Sub-Zeros, because the thing I'm going to take a look at today are the collector's Sub-Zeros. I got a couple of different ones. There were three altogether. The only one I don't have is the carbon fiber, which is ironic because the original box I have here is the one for the carbon fiber. I do have all of the original ones, but what I'm going to do is just bring out the ones that are sort of matching the re-releases that I've recently picked up. So a couple of these were available on a third-party site soon after they were available on oakley.com. So I actually picked up a few of these scattered around just in various places. But what I have here is I have the Planet X Prism Road, the Steel with Prism Sapphire, and the Fingerprint with Prism Black Iridium. Now some of the copies that I have from the original ones aren't going to match the re-releases 100%, but I grabbed the ones that were sort of close. So let's take a look at the first one, which is going to be the Planet X Prism Road. And based on a couple other re-releases and collector's editions that came out in the past few years, it seems like um, Cobalt, which was the original frame that had kind of, the, kind of the bluish tint to it, is now being called Planet X. But back in the day, we actually had two different ones. We had Planet X, which is more of a gray base with a crackle, and then we had Cobalt, which is more of a blue base with a crackle. And just to go over the differences in the transition between those two frames, it was pretty much basically on the sub-zeros that you had that Planet X. Once you get to the new zeros, and especially the new new zeros uh, in the late 90s, specifically like the, the 0.4 and the 0.7, which were the only ones that were left at the time, we got more of a polished finish, and then you got more of that blue base on top of that crackle form. It also seemed to be more of a translucent blue too, so if you kind of look at hold up to the light, you'll be able to see a bit of the light coming through and actually shining through and showing that nice blue, whereas most of the Planet X are going to be more of a matte finish and you can't really get that translucency. But as we start getting the collector's editions, they called it Planet X, but really it's cobalt. It's uh, that nice deep blue, almost has like a metallic sheen underneath the crackle pattern, and it's really nice, um, even if it's not you know true to form. And of course, we don't have positive red iridium anymore, but we do have the Prism lineup, and Prism Road is going to match fairly closely. And if you take a look at the two side by side, it's going to be almost a nicer red on the Prism Road, whereas the positive red is going to be a bit more translucent, not as reflective, much more light's going to be passing through, and it's also going to have more of a purple sheen to it. Now, depending on the, the generation and the era that it came out, you're going to get sort of different levels of red and purples coming through that iridium. And especially with the frame wrap, you're going to get different reflections and things like that, too. Uh, but this one's really nice. Um, I'll put that on real quick just to kind of show you the how it looks. Really, the fit's going to be pretty much the same as the original Sub-Zeros. There are going to be a few different things to note, though. So just like the original Sub-Zero, it is going to have the very short stems. It's not going to have the fangs like we're used to on either the generation 2 M frames or the other sub-zeros. So basically you're going to have uh, something that's going to be very similar. It's almost a little bit longer, just ever so slightly. Nothing that's going to be really huge or noticeable, but it is definitely not going to have those extra fangs like the later zeros are going to have. So once the sub-zeros moved to the regular zero line, the Sub-Zeros kind of went away, but they did keep a lot of the overstock lenses and put them into something called the 0.6. And basically what you're going to have is you're going to have something that's pretty much identical to the lens shape of the Sub-Zero, but it is going to have these fangs right here. And of note here, I do have the Planet X on the 0.6, so that did persist into that line. It's going to be mostly the new Zero in the late 90s that moves to that cobalt, along with the eye jackets and things of that nature. All right, let's take a look at the next one. This one's going to be the Steel with Prism Sapphire. And Steel Frame obviously wasn't available in the original Sub-Zeros. And obviously uh, Prism Sapphire wasn't going to be available as well. So the closest thing we have to the original, or to Sapphire, is going to be the original Blue Iridium. 
which is going to be a, a very nice deep blue borderline purple frame, which is really nice to look at. And if you're outside, it really captures the sunlight and reflects all that nice blue right back out. So side by side, you're going to have something that's, you know, definitely a little bit more purple on the original versus sort of a deep, almost flat blue on the prism sapphire, but they're both equally nice. So again, you're going to get more of a sort of a neutral transmission on this, whereas the blue could sometimes almost be a little bit more towards the, the amber and the fire. It is almost like wearing a fire lens at times. Now, blue iridium did go through a couple transitions. Uh, later in the 90s, we had the newer blue, like on the straight jackets, where you had a very deep amber base. Uh, more towards the Juliet era in the early 2000s, we had more something more akin to just a plain gray lens with blue iridium on top. And then when the stretch line uh, razor blade came out, we moved back to this original one where we had almost a fire amber base and then things went around from there. We had like the 00 blue and a few different variations. So there's a lot of confusion with blue iridium, but as it stands now, we basically have prism sapphire, which is a, a nice frame on its own. Okay, and then the last one I have is gonna be the fingerprint with prism black iridium. All right, and the fingerprint here is gonna be not quite the same as it was on the original. On the original, again, you do have some variation depending on where that pad print had been put on there. And depending on you know, which side you have, sometimes the fingerprint can be a little more on the thin side, sometimes the lines can be a little bit more spaced out. This one does seem to have a bit more of a pattern to it. You can notice that there's a couple of the lines that are like weaving over each other, almost like it's uh, hair or fur or something like that. And it does seem to be a bit more of an elaborate pattern, whereas the original one was more of just a traditional kind of line pattern. Now the fingerprint's not new, um, at least as far as re-releases go. We had the fingerprint series going back five or so years ago, but we had it on things like the frog skin and a few other frames like that. So the fingerprint definitely came back and it's nice to see it also appearing on further editions of collectors. Um, so just kind of going over what these match. So the Cobalt or Planet X with the Prism Road, that's gonna match the Sub-Zero number three the 3N, which has the reduced orbitals, as well as the 6, which is more of the polished model and has the frosted edges removed. The steel with prism sapphire is gonna be more akin to the number four, which in its original state was gonna be more of a planet X with a blue iridium. And that later moved into like the 0.7, which had just uh, sort of reduced orbitals and again moved to the actual name, cobalt. And then the fingerprint with prism black iridium is going to be akin to the fingerprint with just regular black iridium, which came in the number two. The number two did have an N version, and I do see a couple pictures of it with the original colorway, but traditionally most of the time the 2N is going to be the burn brush with the bronze iridium lens. Um, that's the one you see more often. I believe there's a lot of those produced because you could find those pretty easily back in the day, uh, even as recently as like 10 years ago. And those seem to be a bit more prevalent. So aside from just a couple of pictures of the 2N being the original fingerprint black iridium, I haven't really seen more than just photos online. So I've definitely never seen one in person. And I also don't have one in my collection, so we're going to try to forget that ever exists. Yep, so these collector's editions debuted almost pretty much a year ago, April 2022. They retailed for $268. Depending on where you buy them, you can usually get them for around that price. And the Oakley store also had them for sale. So they were pretty easy to get. Um, we thought they were gonna be a little bit more limited than they originally ended up being. But basically, if you just logged on, you could just jump on and grab them. Um, I almost was tempted to get the fourth one, but you know, multiply 268 times three and you end up with a hefty build to a degree. The one other oddity is that there was two versions of the Prism Road. So the one I have here has the frosted edges, very similar to the number three. But there was also one without frosted edges that had more of a mirror ones. We're debating whether that was more of an international release because I do see a couple that were released in Japan and uh, that's more gonna be more akin to the number six. But it's sort of a cool variation. I wish I could have gotten both of those two. A few people I knew actually ended up getting a few erroneously received in their domestic order. So it was sort of a luck of the draw which one you got. But typically most of the ones you got in the USA were gonna have the frosted lenses and then most of the mirrored ones ended up being overseas. And also inside the boxes is this nice packet of information, which is included with every one. And inside it are a few sort of remnants of the past, as well as what they're doing with the new museum series. 
So the museum basically is just a way to take some older models, bring them back under a very limited edition, usually sometimes a little, a few different tweaks, but also paying a heritage to what was originally made in the um, original options. So what we have here is we have a few different cards basically saying that the museum series is recrafted for the modern world. It's rebuilt to the original specs and they're forged from the original tools, assuming they probably have the original molds and they use those to then bring these back. So they should be more or less identical to the originals, even if there are a few different tweaks for modern purposes. And then we also have a fold-out for the Sub-Zeros. And this folds out, showing you just a, almost like a mock of the original catalog that was back in the day. So this is a very cropped and stripped out portion of the original um, catalog that had the Sub-Zeros. So I'll throw that on the screen just so you can see what the original one looked like. But it is sort of a nice touch. And then in addition, you also have the traditional or the usual warranty things that are included with all of the options anyway. So it's sort of a nice way to sort of include the things you would normally get with the package with a little bit extra, kind of paying homage to that heritage that built the original options. So that's about it. Um, really cool releases. Definitely worth grabbing if you're a fan of the zeros and the sub-zeros. Uh, the ReZero came out shortly after this as well. I still don't have one of those yet, but I hope to get one soon just to sort of complete the Zero collection or at least have one of each model in the overall chronological order. But um, hopefully when I get that, I can do another video of that and uh, keep things going. Thank you.